Hey, what's up? Back in the studio again. Gonna take you on a little trip to Assateague Island today. We went camping there a weekend ago, a week ago. It was awesome. Not much of a video because I was traveling with my wife and she took too much of my attention, which was a great thing. We had a great time, beautiful weather, camping was great, everything was awesome. Fishing sucked, but that's probably just me. I'm in pretty new uh, to saltwater fishing. I've only fished it, what, like three or four times ever for real. And uh, it, it wasn't that good. I, after looking at Google Earth after I got home, I should have went this other direction. There was a bigger drop off and deeper. Where I was, it was very shallow. I did get one fish on, but he shook it right off of the boat, and it was a spot. It was a spotted trap. I was so disappointed I didn't get it. But um, hey, let's talk about Astig Island. Let's get the trip going. Alright, so if you look at Google Earth, it's just south of Ocean City. This whole island here is Astigue Island. There is two campgrounds there. There's the state campground and the national park campground. We stay at the national park campground and it is hard as heck to get any camping re reservation anywhere this year because of everyone's off COVID restriction and it's easy to go camping and something to do. And we still don't have the Canadians yet down here in the States, so as soon as they're allowed freely in, it's gonna be really hard to get a camping site after that. Um, we do have a place in September. We're gonna stay again at Astiga National Seashore in September. And it's right across from the campsite we had now. Um, we like camping with privacy. So trees around us, no one right on top of us. Um, we had that here and it was pretty good. There are some campsites that don't have any privacy at all and are really bad. I'll try to give you a, a heads up on some of those. And there's two, really two camp areas. There's the Bayside Campground, which I liked a lot. I think that was pretty cool. And plus you had tons of trees blocking you from the wind. And then there's the Beachside Campground, which is just off the ocean in the sand, which didn't look very private at all and uh, there's probably sand fleas and stuff, whatever, but that's just my opinion. So let's take a look at where I was camping. I was in this area here on the Bayside campsite. Um, we had B37, which is this one right here. There's a great little cutout area, privacy, awesome spot for how my truck is set up. We'll take a look at that now, my overlanding setup. Um, there's another area back here, uh, which this campsite was pretty cool. I think this was B36. Let me pull up the campground. Ah. Yeah, it's like B36. Um, I am staying in this site right across from the one I stayed in in September. Um, this one was pretty private too, especially with how I could put my truck. I could get it in there backwards and um, have some privacy in there. But the ones to avoid in this B loop are <laughs> this one here. I mean, you're right, your campsite is, this is uh, A loop, I believe. And uh, your campsite is right with the bathroom. That was, that was a bad one. And over here on A loop is, there's no privacy on this side. These aren't bad, these ones, they're pretty good. This one's not bad, kind of smallish area. This. These two are prime campsites. Um, they both have you know, what bay access here and water views off the back. And same on B-Loop here too, you got this one that's got great area in front of it. 
And this one over here, even though it's directly across from the bathroom, there's a ton, ton of space there and it's pretty private. V loop all in all is pretty private. There's a couple areas here, you know, they're not bad at all. Um, the C loop, which is all the way over here, this one's the least private of them all. As you can see, there's like no trees separating campers. It's all wide open. Um, but when I was there, there was mostly RVs there. So I've been to an RV uh, campground recently up by Copake Lake and uh, for a camper like me that likes tent camping and camping on my truck, that, that kind of sucked. It was gravel and RVs on top of each other. I just don't get that. I mean, go stay in a hotel. Much better. Um, so here's all the campgrounds on the beach side. Yeah, there's no trees because it's beach side. Um, there's a lot of RV pulling in places. Uh, there is uh, some tent campgrounds here. I don't know if I can see them from Google Earth. Yeah, here they are. The tent ones are back here. Um, they're pretty cool. Now, if I was staying on the beach, I would definitely stay in the tent campgrounds because that's just pretty cool. And you're, you have the, the protection of the dune and the plants in the dune. Um, that's pretty sweet. But the RV style campgrounds, are all over here they're you know pretty much wide open um you know, not much privacy in there for the, you those of you looking for privacy but again you're lucky to get any of these sites for the rest of the year because it's it books up and i think the best way to look for it is on um, um look for weekends people cancel i know the other day there was one uh just opened up on a weekend and uh, that was a pretty good one to get. Um, so let's talk about uh, on our way down. We'd, we'd, st we'd have to call out this place that we ate. Um, what was it called again? There we go, we'll pull it up on, um, nope. I don't want that. There we go, we're going on Google Earth. We're going to Berlin, Maryland, which is only this is probably 25 minutes from the campground, half hour, but crabs to go. Rolling up to this place, rolling up to this place was awesome. It's just sitting there, a beautiful red building. I was so amped to get crabs from this place and it didn't disappoint. I had double crab cakes. No, actually, no, I didn't, I didn't have double crab cakes here. I had the crab bites. They're like little crab balls. It might even be called crab balls on the menu. But it was just solid crab meat, barely breaded. It was delicious. And we got hush puppies. And I got a crab cake wrap to bring home to the camp, uh, well, bring home, bring to the campground for dinner. And that was pretty awesome. Um, after that, we went to the campground and uh, entered it. Um, you see coming down the road here to the campground. Um, Check-in is pretty easy for the, for the campground. Um, you roll up to the gate. Uh, when the gate is open, you just tell them that you have a reservation and they tell you to come around here to the, the check-in building. I usually just pull my trailer in, talk to the guy, have me signed in in five minutes, ready to go. Um, if you arrive after the gate closes, you have to check in with the ranger before 9 a.m. There's signs all over about it. Um, Coming into the campground, the first thing we saw what everyone comes here to Assateague for, and the horror we, we're sitting just about to get out of the truck to go check in, and these horses come barging out of the woods right there. And my wife, like, lost her shit looking at these horses. She loves horses, and they're just running free. And it was, it was an awesome welcome to Assateague Island. Speaking of the horses, they are all over the place. We had them, one time I came back from the beach, um, I think I have a picture here. They were all by my tent. There was a, a foal or a colt and uh, the mom, the dad, another horse. They were all there together um, grazing. At night, it's the funniest thing you can hear. You hear munching and then swallowing so loud because they'll be right outside of your tent um, eating the grass. It's pretty wild. Make sure you have a locking um, cooler like a pelican, a yeti. Um, I carry. I have a ice cold. Ice cold. I, it's a dual zone refrigerator freezer 
cooler on the back of my truck. Um, I also have a Pelican cooler that I actually use for uh, dry foods, like perishable foods, those breads, um, spices, all my condiments, all, they all go in that cooler. The other one, Kyrie's water, ice for fishing, and uh, you know, frozen patties or salmon burgers, whatever I'm carrying, yogurt usually. Um, so set up at the campground was a breeze. No problem, pull up, set everything up, easy. Now, what everyone comes, we do kayak fishing on my channel. We came here to kayak fish. There was an easy, was an easy place to launch right where we were, but I devised this, take a look. So I'm actually pulling my kayak with, uh, with my e-bike. It's a Ad Motor um, M70. And man, it pulled this thing awesome. And all I did to hitch it to the back of the bike, and this, <laughs> remember this is a 14 foot Hobie Pro Angler 14. So by itself, it weighs like 150 pounds. Plus with all the stuff I put on it, probably towing, you know, 250 pounds plus with all my gear on it. And uh, I took a, a bungee cord with uh, two carboneers on it. Just wrapped that around, pulled that up a little bit, clipped it just so it was up off the ground a little bit. Then took my tow rope out of the out of my uh, kayak, tied it to the back of the bike and the front of the kayak, and just cinched it up till they're touching each other, and then just overhand knotted, and it was fine. Was able to tow it down the road here. Um, you can see right here is my campsite, so I pulled the kayak all the way down this road, around to the launch, the kayak launch area down here. Um, Fishing here, I had that uh, speckled trout right out here. There's not many fishing videos on YouTube for the Cinepuxent Bay, I believe it's called here. Um, yeah, Cinepuxent Bay. It's about one foot all the way out to about right here. Um, and then it gets around two feet, and then about four feet here. And you can see this channel on Google Earth. It's about five to six feet here. I came out here, I casted and got a speckled trout on my first cast. Um, I was fighting them for a little bit as a rod I haven't used in the last time. Turns out the drag was messed up. So I was messing with the drag and he jumped up and spit the hook right away. Um, that was the last fish I had the whole trip. I fished that first day for a while and the water was glass smooth. Check it out. There is not a single wave or anything for the longest time. I was, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna get so many speckled trout. And then like 10 minutes later, it turned into this. So I went all the way across to the other side of the bay here to uh, this little inlet and uh, to try to escape the, the wind. I thought it would slow down a little bit. It didn't. So that video you're seeing here again, that's me trying to pedal my Hobie back across this channel back here. It was a tough pedal, but made it for some here. Um, and sitting at home, just came in was my uh, Torquedo 403 Ultralight. That could have helped a lot with this. I could have just zipped right across. <laughs> Would have been awesome. Um, in hindsight, looking at this, on day two, I pedaled all the way up to this bridge, which is called the Verrazano Bridge for a New Yorker. That's pretty funny. Um, fished the pilings there. I didn't have any live bait. I wish I had some crabs because on my live scope, watching the pilings there, there are definitely red drum or something swimming around the bottom. It's only about 10 feet deep on the deepest pilings, but I can see the full fish swimming across huge fish going around there um definitely red sized looking fish um hindsight after looking i should have came up and went around this bend here even off this island here there's quite a, a deep indent on the back side of this island there's some great drops here and some ridges and it gets pretty deep in this area here uh, it's called newport bay but again, I'm gonna be back here in September, so I'll definitely go and fish that area. Um, what else am I forgetting about this? I don't wanna to go too long here, but uh, again, it was an awesome time. But I think what we really gotta look at is what did my wife hate about this camping trip? 
my wife doesn't like camping too much and I'm not forcing this on her but forcing it on her but I'm trying to get her to like it and I'm, I'm giving her all the amenities that she can have um, and the only two complaints she had about camping here is the bathroom situation they are not flushing toilets they are a toilet looking toilet in the bathrooms with a hole that goes a drafty deep hole so if you're taking a crap you got a wind blowing up on your butt um, and it smells like horse shit inside there because of all the poop you know doing doing its thing underneath you um, that's that's one of her complaints the second one was my rooftop tent even though it's got a memory foam mattress pad it just not the most comfortable thing in that smitty belt tent so we have to get a self-inflating pad uh, I think it's a queen size bed up there for that and that'll be much better all in all it was pretty awesome camping trip even with no fish um, when we left we stopped in regular Ocean City you know proper we haven't been to Ocean City itself and since my my son who's 18 now was probably three or four so it's been 14 15 years since we're in Ocean City um, but we stopped at uh, Crab Alley I believe it was and had two crab cakes there that were so good they were so delicious um, another thing to remember is if you want to uber out of the campground no uber will come to the campground so you gotta take a regular taxi but you can get an uber once you get to town back to the campground so if you need to escape for a little bit like we went out to a restaurant one night and uh, you could do that if you want to take an e-bike to get some things that you forgot to pick up or take your truck out the closest store is um here i'll pull out from the map here the closest store is up here um by this crab house there is I think there might be a second convenience store up here but that's a pretty far trek to get up there i think uh with my e-bike it said it would take about 20 minutes to get here um yeah i think that's the place yeah it's right in here it's a store right here um we stopped here to get uh what's this called acetique crab house is it no i don't think that's called acetique crab house it's like a convenience store because i think this is acetique crab house here it used to be a restaurant that's closed right now um but it's a convenience store right here they have drinks anything you need for camping whatever there is a little shop on Assateague island um i did not visit it if we go back here to the beach side uh this little hut right here on the right past the beach parking sells drinks firewood they might have had charcoal too i didn't go inside i didn't have my mask with me um didn't matter <laughs> that's one thing for uh new yorker we're so used to masks up there we went out to a restaurant in maryland nobody's wearing a mask not even the the workers nobody it was just like a shock to us after you know what we go through in new york um but that was different all right so that was acetique yes there's lots of horses fishing was not good but that was probably me because i don't fish so I'll order that often, but I'll get better, I promise you, and I'll take you on those trips. And uh, all in all, I would give Assateague Island a nine out of 10. It gets one knockoff for that uh, for the bathrooms. And yeah, I can see it. They can't have running sewer there, running water like that. So not a big deal, but I, I'd like a half decent bathroom, even though I like to be out in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> I like a good bathroom. What can I say? So that's it. Nine out of 10. I'm going again. I highly suggest that you go there. And uh, all right. I'll see you next time. Oh, fishing tournament in the Rio Reservoir here in New York, in Sullivan County, New York on Saturday. Full video of that coming up. I don't have a pre-fishing video because I'm there 30 times a year, so it doesn't matter. Oh, um, wow. I'll show you how the fishing goes and it's a special one all the entry fees from it go and support socks and cookies uh, it's a great charity so looking forward to it and uh, I'll see you guys later anything is possible yeah. Yeah.